Hi, it's Sam and Rev. Of What Yacht to Do, aboard the Here's to Us. We are going around America's Great Loop and we're getting near the finish line. Today, <laughs> we're going to take you from uh, St. Simon's Island, where we stayed at a beautiful marina for a night and intended to go to Kilkenny Marina to spend the night at a distance of about 67 miles, but obviously we're not at Kilkenny Marina. So it we're going to tell you where we ended up on this. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected is right. We are leaving Morning Star Marina, St. Simons Island, Georgia. You know, we only stayed here one night, and um, I wish we would have stayed a little longer here. Yeah, it was an interesting place. Uh, yeah. Most of the boats left before us, but right. there's Tiger Woods' yacht. Right. We They put us on the fuel dock, and it was lined up with boats. And Tiger Woods' boats in the back there, privacy. But uh, don't you think uh, if you have a boat that big, you are not going to get <laughs> privacy. Yeah. Everybody's going to be gawking at that and going, yeah. whoa, what's going on in there? Pretty good security around it, though, and uh, didn't get too close to it. We had to flip around um, from that marina back to get to the ICW, and then we're headed on this um, Mackay River. River. M A C K A Y. Oh, okay. It's Mackay River, In, yes. Anyway, um, we're going under this ca uh, causeway bridge, and um, looks like a beautiful day. There's some blue sky, but yeah. also some clouds around. If you're driving, it's called the Taurus Causeway. Okay, then. But it's the Mackay River Bridge. Hello from the bridge of Here's to Us on What Got to Do. Thanks for joining us. We are in the skinny water section of the Georgia Intracoastal Waterway, and I've got the boat running tied to a route that Bob423 did. I took his track and I turned that into a route, and I'm uh, coupled there, and I'm watching my depth here. I've and route, I set my depth alarm to 9 feet, so if I start to get into skinny water, I'll know it. Right now, I'm in a slightly shaded blue area that says 9 feet, and we are timing this. We can't be right at high tide at the critical areas, or else we'll be too late to get to where we're going. So we're between uh, mid and high tide, so we're coming in on a rising tide, and we also have a little bit of current going with us. And uh, the boat is steering itself right now. And what I'm doing here at uh, 11 o'clock here is I'm going to be taking readings of my instruments. You can see I'm 12 feet right now. And I'm in between blue, way you want me, Mr. light blue water and uh, white water, which means uh, it's pretty deep. So I'm comfortable going this speed at 12.2. Uh, we're trying to make up a little bit of time to get into the marina. We know that we're going to have to slow down at some critical spots. And if you look over here, I have my critical spots, uh, the Bob 423 routes planned, uh, so that if I get up there, uh, I know that it's coming up probably, uh, oh, in about 25 minutes or so. So a lot of things going on uh, en route, you know, just besides the uh, beautiful and very, I guess, static scenery. It doesn't change much. It's the Georgia grasslands. And the tide here swings, uh, currently it's going to swing low, uh, low tide. It'll go two feet low or so and six feet high. So there is a swing that you have to plan for as you're going through here. Right now you can see I'm at 15 feet of water here, so and we're coming up into a white area here, so I'm not too concerned, but again, I'll show you how I can change my depth alarm here on settings and alarms and sonar. Shallow water is set to 9 feet, and I can bump that up to 10 to give me a little bit more warning if I, if I want. There's 10 feet done. So now... My shallow water alarm, if I start to get into anything around 10 feet below my uh, sensors, which are about 2 feet below the water line, I will know what's going on. And on that depth alarm, another thing I do in my checklist as I'm coming into a marina, uh, I will reset it to 5, give me a little bit more, because usually in the marinas it may be a little shallower, so I can handle 
five feet below the sensors, no problem before I start, uh, you know, being concerned about things. So, anyway, and route procedures here, and I'm going to take a reading at uh, 11 o'clock. I've got everything pretty much filled in here, and all I have to really do is put the latitude and longitude at 3115, basically, just round it off, and 8124. And I have my fuel in, I read my fuel in 30 seconds of a tank, so uh, we're running off the back tanks now, so I'm starting to see a little decrease of my fuel gauges in the back. They were at 32 plus, 32, they're, they're starting to, to wind down. And then my hours, 1054.6 and 1049.2, I'll log that in, and I'll be good until 12 o'clock when, uh, I guess lunch will be served up here in the bridge. All right, we'll talk to you a little bit later. See you. There wasn't a lot of traffic this morning. We did pass this lovely sailboat, but I started to think, what uh, do people know that uh, we don't know right now? Update here, we are going through what's called Buttermilk Sound. And it's an area that has presented problems in the past to people, but again, I'm following Bob 423's track as well as I have his Bob 423 route for this particular area up here, and I'm pretty close to it. The autopilot is tracking just a little bit uh, right, of course, but I'm in 16 feet of water, and uh, I've got my depth alarm set for 10 feet. So I'm not too concerned about it, but one of the things I wanted to show you here was uh, a little bit about the tide planning through here. You know, it's a 68 mile journey today, so you can't be at high tide at every place. So you have to kind of figure out how long it's going to take you, what's your average speed. So I picked an average speed of 10 miles an hour today, and uh, at this point we're doing about 9.3, so that's pretty close. And at some points when we're in the white water, we're uh, pushing that up. But what I did here was kind of make a little route is here we started in St. Simons and we're going to go all the way up and then I started it over again here. Just some critical points. And so the critical points is this buttermilk sound that we're going through right now and as I'm talking to you I've got my eye cross-checking here route distance off course and depth and uh, that so uh, boats driving but I'm watching what the boats doing. And as I come around here, as I see, here's Buttermilk Sound, here's another one, Ultima Sound, that's going to be a critical point. But my real critical point here is this Mud River area here where it begins and ends. And so what I did was I looked at the tide at, uh, it's at 9 o'clock it was low tide, and at uh, 2.45 in the afternoon it's high tide. So, you know, I can't be there right at 14.45 or else I'm going to be late getting into... Uh, Kill Kenny, where uh, our destination is today, and uh, I hate docktails at a late hour. So uh, what we did was we say let's try to make this at 12 o'clock, which is mid tide. And again, with the tide swings, I'm going to have at least three feet above mean low water as I'm coming in here. So I'm feeling pretty good about it, and this will help you kind of stay oriented as well as you know I know where the sounds are. I got. Altima Sound, I kind of penciled in, Doby Sound, Sapelo Sound, St. Catherine Sound. So as we go by, we know there's going to be inflow of water at that point, or there may be some currents. So I'm looking up ahead. Uh, another area uh, of concern, well, I guess the last one today is this Mud River. So we've got three areas of concern that are coming up here that we're going through at uh, mid to high tide. So a little bit about planning and how you can kind of make it easy on yourself. It does take a little bit of time, but as you're going along, you know, you can kind of be, you know, rest assured. Here we are, 15 feet of water and uh, just three feet off course, so you can't do much better than that. I mean, three feet is about the distance. Well, it's a half a social distance unit, isn't it, three feet? Welcome back to the bridge and here's to us. And I just finished taking a reading here. Everything is looking good. Just finishing up one last thing on the latitude and longitude. And uh, getting closer to that magic 32 degree line that we have to be above for insurance purposes. And I'm just kind of 
show you here is one of the critical areas that we had was the Altima Sound and I had marked on my chart when we got to the end of that. So we're coming up on the end of it and also I had as a backup the Bob 423 routes there. The lowest that we saw was uh, I got a, uh, a depth alarm and looked over and uh, saw 9.9 .9. so immediately you know I have in my mind if I get that depth alarm first thing I'm going to do is take my throttles and reduce my throttles to bring it back give me a little bit of you routine know, of what's going on with it if it's rapidly closing I'm bringing them all the way back and I'm going to take my shifters once I have these all the way back my synchronizers off I'm going to take the shifters and put them in neutral and uh, hopefully if we do get into skinny water so uh, we'll minimize the impact of it but really never saw less than 9.9 .9. Feet went quickly back up to over 10, and we got through that area. We're going to be coming up on really our most critical part today is uh, the Mud River area, and we've studied that, and we have that back up in as well. So once we get to there, we'll uh, show you again what's going on. All right, see you later. And oh, by the way, hey, it's uh, it's 12 o'clock, and uh, lunch is served. What do we have today? A Cobb salad on the bridge that here's to us. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, see you later. I kept seeing dolphins, but when I got my camera, they would be gone. And when we were in this stretch, we kept seeing these flies, horse flies, I think they are, coming onto the boat. And yep, there's one right there. I would zap them with my zapper though. All right, we are on our last critical portion for the day, which is Little Mud River. And in anticipation of that, that was the one that uh, I was most worried about, is I've reset my depth alarm. I'll kind of show you here how you do that, settings, alarms, and sonar, shallow water to eight feet, because I'm expecting, you know, we may get down to eight feet, and there it is, 9.7 already. And I saw as low as 8.5 when we started this. You can see I kind of put a little skull and crossbones when uh, I was coming up on that point in my route planning so that I would know when in fact that I was getting to this point and I'm watching I'm really glued right now I'm looking at uh, 16 feet off course I'm not too worried about that um, here's where it started here's where the boat is and I pulled the uh, speed back although we're still doing you know eight and a half We've got a little bit of uh, current pushing us because the tide is rising as we came through that sound. It's pushing water up, so we've got current pushing us. And we're doing a comfortable this as this is down here in the, what I call the danger zone. We're going to be okay because we are between, uh, we're on a rising tide. We hit it just about where we wanted to be was 12 o'clock was our plan. And any later is just better because high tide is at... 245. So uh, we're about three to four feet above uh, low tide, and you can get through here on low tide, but it's not comfortable. So this is why we have a little bit more margin as we're going through here. All right, just autopilot's hanging in there, three feet off course, uh, pretty much right on course, and I am just watching this depth meter here. There it is, 8.8 .8 as we go along here really important to stay on that track. All right, it's our last critical area for today, so I'm going to go pay attention to that and uh, talk to you later. I wanted to show you, did you see that dolphin? And I was so excited because I kept seeing them all day. I just couldn't get them on camera. This is a typical um, shot of how I search for dolphins when I'm trying to make videos. Uh -huh. so running I, around, <laughs> running around to the boat. I saw him like, surely, I think he went to the back. So, no, maybe on the side. Well, maybe he's in the front. Where is he? And I'm just searching and searching. So I think, okay, I'll stay here for a while. Where are you? I'm calm. You're calm. Oh, maybe you're in the back. Let me go back there and see if they're over there. <laughs> Dolphins were everywhere. They just wouldn't let me see them today. 
So the sky started. Oh, oh do you see a little dolphin there? I saw there? dolphins, I but know. I'm looking at the sky at this point, yeah. and we are looking at the weather radar, and it's not looking good. No, I mean, it, the, we see some blue skies behind us. Yeah. Oh, did you see dolphins over there by that marker? So I turned the camera over there. Where are you? Gone. Yeah. All right, now tell them what oh, happened yeah. with this sailboat. This guy has taken his half right out of the middle. And I so am, are you. I am right of the track trying to give this guy room. Oh, come on. And I'm like, I cannot get over any further. I'm at about seven feet oh. of water, and I don't know when it's going to go. So finally he makes a course correction, and he has something to say on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, he, you need somebody at the helm. And I just... And he called us a trawler. Yeah, he called us a trawler. Oh, anyway, so enough there. insults. Yep. Uh, we <laughs> this just, shrimp boat. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Sam started talking to this. Oh, he he started he, first. Yeah, he started to tell us, hey, don't cut short. And, right. And uh, we had a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but the Coast Guard didn't appreciate you being on 16. Yeah. Well, as the day goes, we've been watching the weather... <laughs> and this is a 68 mile run so we were trying to get in before afternoon thunderstorms and guess what we almost made it <laughs> we had six miles to go which is really a half hour wasn't good enough so we basically just pulled over and dropped the hook so here we are you can kind of pan out around there I think there's a there's a Grand Banks or something out there and, and selected an anchor spot. Did you hear that? Yeah, it's uh, some thunder out there. You hear your thunder. And so we, instead of pushing it, we called the marina and they said it's pouring down rain here, so slow down. And we looked at the radar. Yeah. Can you see all those colors and it on kept the radar? Building and it went from uh, yellow to red, so it's better yeah. to just pull over and we are just going to sit here and let it pass. If we can get into Kilkenny Marina before they close, we will do that. They close at 7. It's currently, what, about 3.30 here or so? Yeah. And I'm estimating it's probably going to take about an hour, an hour and a half for this line to push through. And we'll just see what it is. But in the meantime, we're getting a fresh water rinse. Uh, we did yeah, pick up very some salt nice. along yeah. the way through the sound, so we're getting <laughs> rinsed off with fresh water. We had to have a positive attitude yeah. about this and, situation. Uh, we do have, uh, we shut down all the electronics on the boat, just in case we took a lightning strike, try to minimize anything. And we got the anchor light, basically. Oh, yeah. Anchor alarm here. Doesn't look like we're dragging. Doesn't feel like we're dragging. So we're just going to sit it out and... Uh, Maybe start dock trails early. <laughs> <laughs> so, we never made it to kill Kenny Marina. No, and we didn't. The reason is, is that, well, it was another mile and a half upstream, and then the whole docking hootie ha that you go through, <laughs> and then getting out in the morning. We said, let's just go a little bit further, and the storm has passed. It's going to be a nice night to anchor, and we did that. So, we're getting a little bit closer to our destination of Savannah, where we're going to leave the boat and head on home to take care of the sale of the house. Right, and look at that Georgia sunset. Th this is one of the prettiest sunsets we've seen on it the loop. absolutely gorgeous, yeah. yeah, just beautiful. Well, thanks for coming along with us on our trip from St. Simon's Island over to this place. This anchorage. <laughs> and just a classic case of a long journey with tides and also... Uh, if you don't get bedded down by about 3 o'clock or so in yeah. the summertime, you're going to deal with thunderstorms, and that's what happened to us. But we did what we needed to do. So <laughs> Here we see are. you next time on What You Ought to Do.